Hello there, it's Dr. Jim. My topic today, really interesting one, hoarding. How much stuff is too much? Let's look at it. The Mayo Clinic defines hoarding and the excessive collection of items or animals and the inability to discard them. Other sources report that hoarding can be viewed as the acquisition of and inability to throw out worthless items that appear to have no value whatsoever. Some hoarders live in spaces that are so cluttered that the living areas are unusable and some exhibit significant distress or impairment caused by their hoarding behaviors. Is there a neuropsychiatric connection here? Hoarding has been observed in several neuropsychiatric disorders, including schizophrenia, dementia, intellectual and developmental disabilities, depression and eating disorders, as well as in the non-clinical population. People with OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, who hoard and chronically save items may have what is being loosely called compulsive hoarding syndrome. So, OCD and hoarding. What's the connection here? The connection between OCD and hoarding is that in people with OCD, the presence of hoarding symptoms have been associated with increased risk of comorbidities or co-occurring psychological disorders, impaired activities of daily living, reduced insight, especially into their own hoarding behavior, poor response to standard psychological and even pharmacological treatments, and a distinct genetic and neurobiological profile. This is really fascinating stuff. Compulsive hoarding occurs in between 20 to 30% of people with OCD. That's pretty high, that's significant. Roughly 5% of these people are so disabled because of this condition. They respond poorly to antidepressants as well as to cognitive behavioral therapy. There are important differences between compulsive and non-compulsive hoarders. Compulsive hoarders experience behaviors earlier in life, they're compelled to create order, symmetry, and exhibit counting compulsions and indecisiveness. They tend to be older when they seek treatment and they have more family and social problems. Many compulsive hoarders are anxious and depressed, they lack insight, have lower global functioning, social phobias, and personality disorders. Now, here is a snapshot of the average hoarder. While it is difficult to really profile all hoarders, which I'm not trying to do, there are certain characteristics that most share. It's believed that there are roughly 2 million hoarders in the United States, who are predominantly female, older, unmarried or divorced, or they are socially dysfunctional and unemployed. Most do not see their behavior as a problem whatsoever. Interestingly, many hoarders have no psychiatric issues whatsoever. They're just hoarders. Many hoarders live unstructured days they sleep during the day, they stay up at night, as if their entire circadian rhythms, their internal clocks were turned upside down. They many times forget to take their prescribed medications and forget to have them refilled at the pharmacy. Sometimes they don't renew their prescriptions whatsoever. Why? Many hoarders have low motivation, and are very embarrassed about their own behaviors. So what do people hoard? There's a whole variety out there. Um, this is where it becomes both interesting and sometimes dangerous, depending on what 
is being hoarded. Some people are considered shopper hoarders and will purchase dozens and dozens of items that they don't even need. An example of this is the purchase of 100 bottles of ketchup that will be stored in the basement. Why would people do that? Some people consider themselves collectors of many items, including records and CDs, books, newspapers, and magazines. Some people may hoard clothing, clothing containers, other types of containers like boxes, milk cartons, and egg crates. Others hoard mail that go back 10 years or more. There are paper hoarders. There are food hoarders, both fresh and rotten food, by the way. There are hoarders of garbage, trash, and even human waste. There are also those who hoard animals. My final thought, this is a big topic and a short video. And of course, I, I'm not gonna be able to cover all the information about hoarding. I do have another one coming though. For instance, what are symptoms and risk factors involved with hoarding? Who will become one and why? Are there successful treatments or medications? Is OCD really associated with hoarding? And what do skeptics say about that? While much is known about hoarding, there is still so much that we just don't know about at all. Hopefully, with more research, we will have a better understanding of this interesting and sometimes unhealthy and dangerous phenomenon. Hoarding. How much stuff is too much? I'm Dr. Jim. Come back for some more information, and I'll see you soon.